Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another tech video here on the channel. And today we are talking about handlebars, something you guys should be very excited about because this is by far the most inquired about topic on my YouTube channel, Instagram, or even if you guys see me in person at the tracks, uh, you guys always seem to have a lot of questions and who could blame you? There are so many different manufacturers of handlebars out there. They each have a couple different models, you know, whether you're doing the crossbar like this handlebar or the fat bar like is what's on my dirt bikes right now. And then in each of those models, they have 10 to 30 different bar bends, depending on what company you're going with. So tons of options out there. And on top of that, it's a kind of expensive part. You know, it's not a $20 part that you can just throw on and then toss it away if you don't like it. You know, you're spending a hundred to $120 to potentially use it one time and not even enjoy it. So and I would definitely like to help you guys make the correct purchase. I am not ashamed to admit that I'm very particular about my entire rider triangle. That's the handlebar, the seat, and the foot pegs and kind of how they relate to each other. And I'm constantly doing testing. You guys always seem to notice when I'm using a different foot peg or seat height, but the thing you guys notice every single time is when I change handlebar. And whenever I change, I get absolutely bombarded with DMs or comments on the YouTube channel like, hey, why'd you switch? Do you like it? Should I switch? Instead of replying to everyone individually, I still will reply, don't get me wrong, but I figured I would go ahead and make a video just so that, so that you're not waiting on a reply from me and also I can fit a lot more information in a video than I can in an Instagram DM. And just to give you guys a little overview of what you can expect to see, I'm gonna be going over my recommended brands, styles, so like I said, crossbar versus fat bar, bends, um, that's like, you know, how tall it is, how swept back they are, if the ends flare up or down. And then the last thing I'll touch on is the bar adjustment because you can see how much the profile of the bar changes just rotating it in your clamp. And that's something that a lot of people overlook. And in my opinion, it's one of the biggest contributing factors to the way that your bike feels underneath you. So very important to get that right. But there's a lot to cover in this video, so let's jump right into it. So first thing you gotta do is pick what brand you wanna go with. and. Being straight up here, Renthal is at the absolute pinnacle. I don't think anybody would argue with me in saying that Renthal makes the absolute highest quality and has the most innovation out of all the companies out there right now. They have been around for ages and you can just see looking through the pro field that it's the choice of handlebar for most of the guys who are putting everything on the line for the sport. They sponsor a lot of the factory teams and, and as a result, they are the company that I choose to work with and who I recommend to anybody who asks me. Of course, whenever I make a video like this, I feel the need to put it out there that Renthal is one of my sponsors, but as with all of my sponsors, this is a company that I was a customer of long before I ever started the YouTube channel or long before I even raced professionally. And, and as I became more relevant in the YouTube and the motocross space, I reached out to work with them because I love their parts so much and I am just fortunate enough that they agreed to work with me. So these are my absolute truest feelings and I'm not being paid to say anything like this. They also have some really great tools online such as their WorksFit handlebar comparison tool, which I'll show you guys in a little bit when we're talking about bar bends, but they offer that to give you guys a visualization of what a handlebar is going to look like in 3D and you can compare it to other handlebars and just see how they relate to each other better than just looking at some numbers on a spreadsheet. And if that's not enough, they're very open about which of their sponsored pro riders is using which handlebar. If you're ever wondering about a rider in particular, you can head over to their Instagram account, find a post of that rider. So for instance, I'm looking at one of Ken Roxon's World Supercross Suzuki right now. And in the bottom left hand corner, you can see it's almost like a little grocery bag icon. And if you click on that, that will actually bring up the handlebar with the bend and even the bar pad that he's using. So, and you might think that that's just a generic one they put, but if you scroll down a couple of posts, you find the one of Hunter Lawrence and you can click on that same icon and see that he is running the 827. And it's not just the factory riders. If you go back to a reel that they posted of me, they even put that I was running the 997, which is the handlebar that I was using in that video. And then they posted another video of me using the 827 and they linked the correct handlebar. So super attentive to detail and it gives you guys a very good resource to see what some of your favorite racers are using. So shouts to Renthal, that's pretty sick. So once you pick a brand to go with, you then have to decide what style of handlebar you want. The and main two that you're gonna be picking between are the fat bar style, which you're seeing on my bike right now, does not have the crossbar. And then of course the other one, 
does have the crossbar. Renthal calls this their twin wall. Both of these have the same diameter lower tube here, so you're gonna use the same handlebar mount no matter which one you go with. So, so these are pretty easy to swap back and forth between. There is the 7 8 inch style that also has the crossbar. That's what normally comes stock on some of the OEMs. And it's essentially just a weaker version of the twin wall handlebar. And one of these two styles is gonna be the natural upgrade from the 7 8 but the 7 8 will provide a little bit more flex than the twin wall, so just note that you are going to have to get different handlebar mounts for the 7 8s versus one of these two bends. And talking about the differences here, it's basically the strength and rigidity that's changing between the fat bar and the twin wall. You'll get a little bit more flex out of the fat bar handlebar, and that can numb and dampen some of the little choppy bumps that you can feel, especially if you're riding like a hard pack track where you're getting a lot of little chatter bumps, or maybe there's a lot of rocks on the track and you're feeling a lot of feedback through your handlebars. Or let's say you're moving up to a 450 from a 250 and you're not used to the handlebar vibration. Moving over to the fat bar can help reduce some of that chitter chattery and vibration feeling that you might be getting with your twin wall. So a lot of instances that is desirable, but let's say you're someone who is very picky about your suspension setup and you want to feel every little thing that your front end is doing so that you can help dial in your suspension. I'm looking at guys like Ken Roxon on this one who uses the twin wall for that very reason. He wants to have a lot of feel on the front end so he can accurately tune things in. And Kenny's very precise. He wants a very precise feeling of the front end. And that is the sort of characteristic that the twin wall can offer. Plus it is also a bit of a stronger handlebar. It's a little bit harder to bend in the event of a crash because it does have that reinforcement there. And one of the big reasons that I like to run the twin wall is it acts as the perfect perch for my polar heart rate watch to strap onto so that I can just look down while I'm riding and see it right here on my handlebars. It just wraps right around. The bar pad on the fat bar doesn't leave a whole lot of room for something like a wristwatch to go. You got to kind of cram it in on one of these little areas over here. The fat bar does, however, provide a lot more room for your controls to go. You can see on the twin wall here, there's kind of like this hard stop. Where this rubber piece connects the inner tube to the outer tube, and that's as far as you can go with your controls. But you can actually move your lever super far in, and you have a little bit more room to mount things on the fat bar. All right, so now that you've picked a company and a style to go with, it's time to do the hard thing, which is pick the correct bend for you. And I decided to break the lawn chair out and get comfortable because we might be here discussing this for a little while. As I said before, whenever you guys ask me for a handlebar recommendation, you guys always provide me with your height and you say, Jeff, I'm a taller dude, what handlebar do you recommend? And it's easy to think intuitively that your height should be the most determining factor in what handlebar bend you go with. And while it is a pretty important part of the equation, there's a lot of other pieces of the puzzle that go into it. And we can find examples of short racers who have thrived with tall handlebars or very tall racers who thrive with low handlebars. Look at someone like GP racer Arminas Jessiconis. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. He is an absolute monster of a rider. He's probably 6'7", six, 6'8", six, at least. And he runs one of the lowest handlebars that I've ever seen. And the dude absolutely rips. Conversely, look at somebody like Dylan Ferrandis. He's not short by any means, but I would say a very average height guy, and he runs ape hangers, brother. They both obviously make it work. It's hard to pinpoint exactly what attributes you need to focus on in order to decide what kind of a bend you need on your dirt bike, but through my testing, I've kind of figured out a couple key things that I always focus for for myself. So number one, it is sort of about your overall height, but it's more so about your body proportions. So if you look at somebody like me, I'm almost six foot two, and yet I don't really run a very tall handlebar. For a long time, I just ran a really tall handlebar because I was under the impression that tall guy means tall bar. and that was that. But I would always complain about kind of front end issues and just not feeling like I could weight the front end as much as I wanted to. And kind of just recently I discovered that when I'm sitting on my dirt bike, I'm actually a pretty average height looking person. And it's because proportionally my torso is pretty average size. I'm all legs. There's actually some pretty funny pictures of me on a professional starting gate. And my helmet is like perfectly in line with everyone else's. If anything, my helmet's a little bit lower than the other guys who are way shorter than me. And that's kind of when it clicked for me. I was like, man, when I'm sitting on my dirt bike, I do need just a regular or maybe even a little bit lower of a handlebar in order for me to get the correct weight over the front end. Cause it's not like I just have this massive torso where I'm towering over everybody. 
I really only need that height when I stand because my legs are so long. And then I run into the issue where when I put an average height bar on my handlebar for sitting, then I stand up and I'm absolutely way too tall for the handlebar. So in that instance, instead of raising the handlebar up and sacrificing sitting position versus standing position, you can actually look at the other parts of your rider triangle, like the seat and the foot pegs, and adjust those to make the correct formula. So right now on my bike, I have the 827, which is one of the most popular and most average height bar bends that Renthal makes. But in order to reduce the gap between my seat and my handlebar, I run a 30 mil tall seat. So that effectively makes it feel like I'm running a lower handlebar without actually lowering my handlebar. And obviously raising my seat a little bit doesn't affect the distance between my foot pegs and my handlebars. So when I'm standing up, it doesn't cramp me up any more than it would if I lowered my handlebars. And actually on the other hand, I then run a 10 millimeter lower Raptor titanium foot peg for the same reason. Lowering my foot peg doesn't change my seat to bar height when I'm sitting, but it does make me less cramped when I go standing. So as you can see, there's a lot more into choosing your bar height than simply just looking at how tall you are. You kind of have to look at all the pieces of the equation and you can change your bar height by changing some other aspects of your bike. So that's my little speech on that out of the way, but let's actually get into talking about the difference between a tall and a short bar. Like I kind of already said, a shorter bar basically is just gonna let you get a little bit more weight on the front end. This is especially important if you ride harder pack tracks where you have chop coming into ruts and you need a little bit more precision or you need some more weight on the front end to help you pivot on like a flat slippery surface. The shorter handlebar will definitely help you there. And I actually find that sometimes I get a little bit less tired if I have a shorter handlebar handlebar because accelerating out of corners, I can get my weight a little bit further forward on the bike and kind of use that to keep me on the bike so I don't have to hang onto the handlebar so much. I like the feeling of running a taller bar that's a little bit further back. So I kind of go back and forth between the 827, which is on my bike now, and then the 997, which I was showing you guys earlier, but I like to run the 997 in the sand where you don't quite have as much acceleration, in which case it doesn't really matter if the handlebar is a little bit taller because you don't have the same sort of hard acceleration in the sand as you do on some grippy hard pack dirt. But when I do ride some loamy tracks where I can accelerate really hard, I like to switch back to the 827. Of course, a tall handlebar does give you a little bit more room to get off the back of the bike and it makes it a little bit more comfortable to stand up. So you'll typically see sand riders like Jeffrey Hurlings running a taller, a little bit more swept back handlebar just so he can get a little bit more weight off the front end to help it glide through the sketchy sandy stuff. And so you really have to take into account what kind of surfaces and what strengths you have as a rider. And you also have to make the decision of whether you want to lean into your strengths like Jeffrey Hurlings. He knows he's good in the sand so he just kind of tailors his bike to be set up really well in the sand. And if he gives up a little bit on the clay sections, you know, he's obviously okay with that. But let's say you know you're really good in the sand, then maybe you will purposely go with a setup that's a little bit worse in the sand because you know that you have the skill to go the same speed in the sand even with a little bit more of a hard pack setup but setting your bike up for the hard pack is gonna make you go faster in the hard pack section. So it's a lot to consider, you know, do you wanna lean into your strengths or try and work on some of your weaknesses and just trust that you will have the skill to, to maintain your speed in your strong parts of the track. It's a hard decision to make and at the end of the day, you might just have to play around with it and one really good way to do that is to get bar riser spacers. That's a pretty good way to easily go to a track and test out some different bar heights, see if maybe you do wanna swap over to another height handlebar. Of course, height is not the only factor in a bar bend. There's also something called sweep, which is essentially how far the tips of the handlebars are swept back towards you versus a bar that has no sweep, which would be completely flat straight across, kind of like a mountain bike handlebar. And what I find this is useful for is your elbow placement. If you take your hands straight up and down like this and you start to pretend that you have more and more sweep, you can see your elbows just naturally start to dip. So finding a handlebar with less sweep will actually kind of naturally bring your elbows up. A handlebar with less sweep will also bring you a little bit further forward on the motorcycle and vice versa. More sweep will get you a little further back on the bike. So let's say you're a shorter guy, but you wanna get off the back of the bike a little bit more. Maybe you want a shorter handlebar that has some more sweep so that you're getting the best of both worlds. The handlebar is low, but it's also swept back so you can get off the back of the bike. And it's very hard to compare handlebar to handlebar if you're just looking at numbers on a spreadsheet. So one of the most powerful tools that Renthal provides is that works fit handlebar comparison that I was telling you guys about earlier. It's especially useful if you already have a Renthal handlebar and you have a desired effect that you're going for. Like let's say you want a handlebar that's not any taller, but it just has less sweep. Pick your handlebar as the base handlebar. And then on the right side, you can go through and select every single handlebar that Renthal makes. And you can actually see in 3D 
how it's going to look compared to the handlebar that you have. That is just absolutely massive because before I knew about this tool, there would be times when I would just look at the numbers on the sheet and I would try and find a bar that I thought was almost the same, but just one tiny difference. And then I get the handlebar and it feels completely different. And then finally, once I discovered this tool, I would go back and look at them in 3D. And I'm like, if I had this tool before, I would have known that that was not gonna be the right handlebar for me. You can also see things that aren't even listed under a number. So one big thing that I find I like with handlebars is for the tips of the handlebars to have a little bit of an upward slant to them. Just like I said, if you take your hands and rotate your wrists up, you can see how it naturally raises your elbows. And this isn't a number that's listed on any spec sheet, but it is something that you can see in the WorksFit handlebar comparison tools. You can see here, the red handlebar kind of has a little bit of a downward slamp, and then the handlebars that I run has that big upward inflection. And that's a number that you're not gonna find on any spec sheet. I don't even know if you could do the math between some of the other specifications and figure out what handlebar is gonna be like that, but so cool that you can just visually see it in that handlebar comparison tool. And it's one of the reasons that I recommend Renthal so heavily is because like I said, these are expensive handlebars and you wanna know what it's gonna look like and how it's gonna be compared to the handlebar that you already have. So as you guys can clearly see, it's not just a direct relationship between your height and what height bar bend you need, but I do have some general recommendations for you guys based on your height, whether you're short, medium or tall and they are by far the three most popular bar bends amongst the factory pros if you go through the Instagram like I said you'll see that almost every single Renthal Pro either runs the McGrath bend which I recommend for shorter guys the Villapoto Stewart bend which I recommend for medium guys and then the RC Honda bend which I recommend for taller guys so Renthal uses a name and number system to differentiate between the different handlebars and models of handlebars the McGrath is the actual bend and then the number before it will change whether you're looking at the fat bar version or the twin wall version so the McGrath in the twin wall is a 999 the McGrath in the fat bar is the 821. And if you pop into the WorksFit tool, you can see that these handlebars almost have the exact same bend. The only thing that really changes between them is the height. They're a very neutral bar. They have a pretty medium amount of sweep. The ends of the bars flare up just a little bit like I like to help with the elbows. So if you guys are just looking for a general good starting point, I would go with one of those. They seem to be insanely popular amongst the factory boys. So if it works for them, it's probably gonna work for you as well. The final thing I wanna touch on really quick is the rotation of your handlebars because this is super important. I see people with some insane rotation of their handlebars and that can really throw off the handling of your bike. I always recommend to start with an absolutely zeroed out neutral position, which if you get a perfect side on view of your dirt bike, you take an imaginary line and extend it through your fork leg like so and then you can put another imaginary line through the angle of your handlebar and perfectly zeroed out neutral would be where those two lines are perfectly parallel to one another you never want to go further forward than this because it just puts way too much weight on the front end and it can make things feel really twitchy especially under braking coming into a corner it just makes things feel very nervous and you can easily tuck the front end and eat crap pretty hard and trust me i have studied the top factory guys a lot because this is something I care about a lot and not a single one of them runs it past neutral. If anything, they just bring it back a couple degrees from neutral to increase the stability a little bit. So there you have it guys. Hopefully I touched on some things that maybe you didn't consider before and um, hopefully I gave you a solid base and hopefully I gave you guys a little bit of direction to go off of if you're trying to figure out what handlebar is perfect for you. Ultimately, nobody can make that decision for you, but hopefully I at least gave you some information and some tools to help you get you started in the right direction and just make that process a little bit easier for you guys. So thank you for tuning in to another Jaywalk Tech Talk video. If you have some suggestions for the next episode or just a future episode in general, drop them down below. I really enjoy making these for you guys and the comments on the last one were really good. When you guys are stoked about them, it definitely makes me more likely to make more. So, so thank you guys very much for watching. Leave a comment, let me know what you think of this one. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you in another one. Peace out guys. Oh